Pennsylvania, the back mountain area of Luzerne County is in a fight. It's a fight between keeping the natural beauty and rural feel of the area or turning it over to the gas companies with the promise of financial windfalls and turning it into an industrialized gas field. We've had gas companies buying up land. We've had uh, several waves of landmen that have come through the back mountain area offering people money for their land. The gas company specifically in Canada has, and Whitmar has leased over 22,000 acres from Benton to uh, Lehman so far. So at first, as legislators, we were given several seminars um, by Chesapeake um, gas uh, company for one and it was a very professional uh, job they did a great job presenting slides video and so on explained the process and the thing that was most encouraging was the fact that it looked like there was going to be thousands of jobs uh, life-sustaining jobs so uh, we all had a very positive outlook and then as uh, things began to unfold um, there were folks that are focusing in on environmental issues that said, wait a minute, you know, we're leasing a heck of a lot of public land. About one third already of our public lands were leased. That's about 690,000 uh, acres. And we, we have over 200 million acres of public lands. And we began saying, wait a minute, we better, we better take a break here and make sure that what this process is going to do isn't going to destroy our environment. When I saw a map of Jackson Township, which is part of my district, and the leases that had been signed in Jackson Township, I became frankly alarmed um, because that's where Seastown and Huntsville Reservoirs are that serve so many of my constituents. People enter into these gas leases as individual property owners and there is no requirement that they notify local municipalities or local elected officials or the water company. And Canna uh, issued a map of the leases that it held in Jackson Township. And that's the first I became aware that there were leases under uh, contract in my district. Pennsylvania, you know, has beautiful, beautiful lands, scenery, the mountains, uh, the, uh, the timber. Uh, so, and the most important thing is we have quality water. Uh, this is a valuable resource and none of us wanted to jeopardize this water source, which is part of our lives, uh, you know, for the sake of the gas. The risk to our fresh drinking water supplies is, is the greatest threat and it's a real threat. And it's something that cannot necessarily be remedied if it does happen. For example, the accident that we recently had in June in Clearfield County, where there was a well blowout and a million gallons of fracking solution spewed out into the air. Uh, that contaminated such a wide area of forest land. Luckily, it happened in a state forest. But if that same accident had happened where the gas companies are planning to drill in the watershed of the Huntsville Reservoir and the Seastown Reservoir, those drinking water sources would be contaminated with fracking solutions and other chemicals. Um, so obviously any contamination of Aqua Pennsylvania's wells or Pennsylvania American Water Company's reservoirs would have a dramatic impact on Wilkes-Barre City, on all of my district that's served by those reservoirs. My notes just talk about 100,000 people in the Wyoming Valley, including residents in Courtdale, Kingston Township, Kingston, Pringle, Swearsville, Luzerne, Wyoming, West Wyoming, um, and that's just those two reservoirs. Any contamination of the public water supply, whether it's wells or Pennsylvania American Water Company's reservoirs, would have a devastating impact on the economic situation in Luzerne County. What do we do if we can't drink our water? When we're talking about the amount of accidents that we've already experienced in Pennsylvania, in two and a half years we've had almost 1,500 separate accidents. And that's on 2,000 wells drilled in uh, Pennsylvania. So we've had ni over 900 of those accidents have resulted in contamination of water or soil. Just from January to June, we've had like 424 accidents on about three wells per day. 
So if you look at the accident that happened in Clearfield County in June of this year, if we just had a 1% chance of an accident on approximately 120 wells that are going to be permitted in Luzerne County, that will potentially damage the watershed area for both the Huntsville and the Seastown Reservoir and destroying the clean drinking water for everyone in the Luzerne uh, County area that gets their water from West Wyoming down to West Nanticoke areas. So that's what we're risking here for the profit of out-of-state corporations for jobs that 70% of them, according to Senator Casey, are coming from out of town. Uh, jobs that are not being taken necessarily by local people. Uh, this is what we're risking so that co uh, profits uh, can be made by out-of-state corporations and large, you know, wealthy landowners. I know that Pennsylvania American Water Company is developing those plans right now. My understanding is that they would use another water source, Harvey's Creek, for Seastown. I don't know that they have a backup plan in place as yet for Huntsville, but obviously um, trying to supply uh, alternative sources of drinking water for their customers would be a massive undertaking. Only less than 1% of the people at Harvey's Lake have leased their land for gas drilling. Yet the large landowners around Harvey's Lake that have leased their land could potentially contaminate Harvey's Lake water supply. The Lake Township well that was approved by Encana to drill is only one and a half miles away from Harvey's Lake. Harvey's Lake also has fresh uh, spring feeds that feed the Seastown Reservoir. If anything happens to Harvey's Lake, not only will the residents of Harvey's Lake suffer and the property values be worthless, but the fresh drinking water supply of people drinking from the Seastown Reservoir, 80,000 plus people, will be without fresh water. People need to be very well aware of the potential for danger here, the, the risk that we're, we're undertaking for the sake of this economic boom. And when I went to Dimmick and saw how devastating it is to be without water for drinking, for bathing, for washing your clothing, for cleaning your house, and um, some of the people I talked to said that the water burns their eyes when they shower, that their clothes smell from the, from the well water contamination. And as much as the gas and oil companies would tell you that they're, they're, those wells were always full of methane, there probably was some level of methane gas in those wells, but not to the extent that there was after the drilling. Not only are we going to have to deal with the extraction of the gas, we also are going to have to deal with the transportation of the gas. If the Wyoming Valley Sanitary Authority does open up a treatment plant in Hanover that was proposed, they are inviting gas drillers to send their waste disposal through Luzerne County to this area. So in addition to uh, at least right now over 120 possible wells, and I'm sure a lot more, we're inviting all that truck trucking traffic and waste disposal with the chance of truck turnovers, accidents. There's been a lot of truck accidents in various counties. That's what Hanover is looking at in particular, but getting to and from the northern tier counties to Luzerne County to dispose of this waste is going to really industrialize our beautiful area. We also discovered that we don't have enough police, state police, to make sure that we can control those roadways, check the trucks for safety and also for weight, and make sure that they are transporting that water to and from the designated spots. Well, PennDOT is restricted um, in what it can do with regard to roadways. Um, they can put weight restrictions on certain types of roads. Um, and then the local road issue is even worse because local municipalities that own those roads and the county that owns, lo owns county roads um, is very limited in what they can do. The um, gas and oil companies would tell you that they are required to repair the roads. Um, are they going to repair all the roads, uh, 81 and um, 309 and 29 and all of the roadways that are going to be damaged by the hundreds and hundreds of trucks hauling millions and millions of gallons of water and then wastewater away? Um, 
I think it remains to be seen who is going to pay that bill. Representative Mundy um, proposed a temporary moratorium, which would be only for a period of a year. That would give all the regulatory bodies an opportunity to make sure that all the regulations were in place, the safeguards are in place, and then provide everybody enough time so that we could then modify whatever needs to be done. Well, House Bill 2609 calls for a one-year moratorium on the, on the issuance of new drilling permits. It does not call for a moratorium on drilling. Um, the, the bill would say that, the bill says that you cannot uh, issue new drilling permits with, for the next year. And obviously that would take effect once it was passed. We're going so fast, we're discovering that we don't have enough of the regs in place. And as a result, it's going to take expert testimony in order to design what needs to come. So there has to be a co cooperation between the gas companies, DEP, state officials, et cetera, to make sure that we get it right. There are so many issues that need to be addressed with regard to the roads, with regard to the hauling of the frack water, with regard to the drilling process itself, um, protecting our public water supply, making sure that our emergency responders are uh, adequately equipped and able to respond to emergencies. All of these things are not in place at this current time. Um, the buffer around the, the uh, reservoirs is only 100 feet in current law. Obviously inadequate. Um, we're not sure that the drilling companies can't drill underneath the reservoirs. So the moratorium on new permits would obviously put a hold on any permits not currently issued and to my knowledge there are no permits that have been even applied for um, in Jackson and Kingston townships. So let's find out what happens with the Solansky properties, the Buddha properties, um, and the drill sites there. Um, let's see how the fracking uh, wastewater issue um, plays out. But we need to put a moratorium in place in order to update our law and regulation. Everybody in Luzerne County needs to get involved to stop this massive industrialization that's coming to our area or our communities will not be the same. Our clean drinking water is at risk. Certainly our clear, clean air is at risk. Our highways and our roads are going to be ruined and destroyed. Our environment will not be the same. We're going to lose tourism dollars. We're going to lose agricultural uh, dollars when farms and wildlife uh, become contaminated. So northeastern Pennsylvania is going to change drastically unless the people get involved and say, we either need to do this right, if it is at all possible, or we need to stop it. The DEP is trying to figure out just what is causing all of the bubbles in parts of the Susquehanna River. It's investigating whether there is a link between bubbles and Sugar Run and a natural gas drilling site nearby. Many aren't taking any chances. They say they're having their well water privately tested as a precaution. People aren't going to be happy with the changes. 